We've looked at this problem of uh, range for a commercial transport, a large commercial transport, and predicted that range using the Breguet range equation. What I want to look at in this video is uh, how good are the assumptions we're making. Um, I want to go through and talk about some of the assumptions we make in doing the Breguet range analysis and try to quant do some quantitative uh, estimates for the magnitude of some of the errors we're making. Um, so in particular, I want to look at this, uh, these assumptions of steady and level flight, um, which also combine to um, we make this assumption in the final step to get to this range equation that uh, eta and L over D are constants, which allows us to do the integral and get to this form here. So um, let's take a look at that for a little bit. We're going to consider this problem here that we've been looking at that... Um, in doing that and trying to be more quantitative about it. So um, part of the assumption here is that the weight equals the lift and of course because we're flying along burning fuel the weight is actually changing which means the lift has to change in order for us to stay at the um, same uh, altitude. Okay um, now the lift we can relate to the lift coefficient and to the free stream conditions, the free stream density, that's the density at the altitude we're flying at, the velocity of the airplane squared, right? the reference area, and CL. So if the weight is changing, if the weight's decreasing in particular, and the lift decreases, then that means some of these terms have to decrease. Now SREF is just a parameter, uh, the, you know, some wetted air, some planform area or something. So uh, the only options here would be for these other quantities to decrease. So uh, if the weight decreases, some combination of rho infinity, v infinity squared, and CL is going to have to drop also. If we require the density, let's look at this one at a time. If we require the density to come down, um, that means the altitude has to change, right? The, the density just doesn't suddenly change in the atmosphere. Um, a drop in the density is going to require the altitude to increase. The density is a uh, function of the altitude and in particular it decreases as you get further up into the atmosphere. So um, that obviously violates the level flight assumption. Okay, so that, that's a concern. Um, another possibility is to lower the velocity. Right? Change the weight, we can change the velocity and um, still have weight equals lift. And uh, the problem there is that will violate the steady flight condition that we've assumed. Right. Um, another option would be to lower the CL. And, you know, how would we do that? Well, we'd lower the CL by changing the angle of attack as we're flying along. And that's certainly feasible. Um, but that also impacts the drag coefficient. Right. If we change the angle of attack, then the uh, drag will also change, not just the lift. And um, so the question is, you know, does the drag and lift change in the same way so that L over D is constant? And you would guess, of course, the answer is generally that's not going to happen um, because the lift-drag relationship is nonlinear. And so I've just drawn up the drag polar here, uh, a typical drag polar here. So if we look at that, um, let's put ourselves um, at some cruise condition. So I've drawn in a red dot here, um, which is where we're cruising at, let's say. And I can draw a straight line through that dot and the origin, which is a line of constant CL over CD. So to stay on uh, a constant CL over CD, I would have to stay along that blue uh, dotted line. But if I'm flying along on the drag polar, that's not what's going to happen. If I lower the CL a tiny bit, um, let's say like I've done here, I've put a small green dot in here. Um, so I've lowered the CL, keeping on along the same drag polar. I'm not on the same CL over CD any longer. In fact, I'm on a different one. So lowering the CL means that CL over CD is not going to quite be constant. And um, so none of these are going to be completely um, uh, valid in terms of uh, keeping the same assumptions we've had. Let's look at one of them in particular and see how bad the assumption is, how, how much we've violated an assumption. So the one I'm going to look at here is this altitude change. How much would the altitude have to change, and is it a large amount, in order to keep the uh, to adjust the density so that the lift equals the weight? And in fact, this does happen all the time. Um, uh, this is often the way aircraft fly. Um, 
they generally don't adjust the altitude continually throughout uh, flight. Usually what happens is the altitude gets adjusted in some steps and um, uh, and so it's not a single instant in time but it, it you know you might fly at two or three different altitudes depending on how long the cruise is that you're on. So this does happen. Let's just think about how large this altitude adjustment has to be. Um, so we're going to maintain the same CL and CD such that L over D is constant. Okay. And um, we have the initial part of cruise, some initial weight at the beginning of cruise, which will be um, at some altitude. So I'm going to call that rho infinity initial, right? So it's the density at whatever the initial altitude is, V infinity squared S ref and CL. At the final weight, uh, the final weight at the final part of cruise, I'm at some different altitude now, such that I can keep velocity and the CL fixed uh, throughout cruise. So, um, so it's easy then to take these two relationships and show then that uh, the density at the final time, uh, final part of cruise, is the weight ratio final over initial times the initial density. Okay. Um, now, we can look at these different terms together. The, for the problem that we were looking at, the final to initial weight ratio is 0.5625. And let's say uh, this aircraft is flying at about 11 kilometers, which is a typical um, altitude for this type of large transport aircraft. And so at 11 kilometers, the density, if you look it up, is about 0.3639 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so I can plug all that in. And I'll find that the density at the final um, part of cruise needs to be 0.2 kilograms per meter cubed. And then I could again look that up to see what altitude that implies, and I'll find out that a density of about 0.2 occurs when the altitude is at about 14.7 kilometers, which means that over the course of my flight, I will need to gain about 3.7 kilometers to keep the density at a to put the density at a value so that the CL and the velocity do not have to change. Okay, and that sounds like a lot. In fact, it's a bit of an overestimate because the amount of uh, fuel that I've assumed used, I've in fact put some numbers together based on using based on using all of the fuel. In fact, I, we you wouldn't do that in practice because you have to save some fuel to uh, um, land and for some reserves. So this is definitely an overestimate. But that said, it's still really small. To put it into perspective, um, in terms of the level flight. Um, assumption, we're cruising over 13,000 kilometers and only are going to gain three to almost four kilometers. So we can do the uh, um, tangent of 3.7 over 13,400 uh, kilometers to find out what's the required slope uh, of the flight path if we were to gain that altitude. And um, of course it's minuscule. It's 0 0.016 degree uh, for the flight angle. Um, that would be needed to gain that much altitude over 13,000 kilometers, so it's nothing. Um, what that means is our assumption here of level flight is really quite good, um, quite reasonable. So um, if the way we adjust um, uh, the flight so that L over D is constant is to gain altitude, which in fact is often what is done uh, to keep the plane flying efficiently, then um, the assumptions we're making for the Breguet range equation should actually be quite good.